Nigel Rafferty in the green and gold. Now, Oko, okay, big banger. Rafferty, though, has got a reputation as being a durable fighter. This, of course, is the first match of the season for both boys. Oko looks well tuned up for this one. Rafferty, I've seen him in better shape. And uh, Rafferty's uh, opponents in this last year have included Bruce Scott, big puncher, destined for a British title shot very soon. He's also faced Ulla Clementson, of course, the Norwegian, who should have been on the bill this evening. So Oko will look to get this job over within three rounds, I would have thought. Nice right hand then from Oko, followed by a left hand. So that's it. Great. Stand right back. One thing Rafferty will find here, of course, fighting at Cruiserweight, he's normally boxes around light heavy or even super middle a couple of years ago, but uh, the question, of course, is whether he can cope with the extra power that Oko has. <laughs> Oko pressing for a fight with the British champion Terry Dunstan. That would be a cracker. I'd like to see that one come off sometime this year. Nice up up there from Oko. Good punch. And Chris Oko showing a very good variety of punch. Well, pretty tidy start then for Chris Oko here in round one. Didn't do much wrong there. So there then, on the left is Frank Black, you may remember from the Terra Lawler stable. And there's Dean Powell on the right. Touch of replay here. Chris Yoko going forward, putting Rafferty under some pressure. So here we go then Second for round two. round two. And our referee Marcus McDonald recently promoted to A class, which means he can handle just about anything with the exception of world title fights abroad, I do believe. So congratulations to him. Brother, of course, of Jim McDonald, the former British and European champion. Chris Oko then in the Kronk colours. He's actually got Kronk on his uh, leading leg. Nice body shot there. And if Rafferty is lacking anywhere, it looks like it might be downstairs. As I say, I've seen him in better shape. Good right then from Oko. Something punched, that one hurt. 
not too clear to see, I think you'll agree, but uh, Rafferty felt it. Well, the unbeaten Chris Oko there took a, a pretty good left jab from Rafferty. Oko, of course, has won all 11 of his starts to date and a double champion already. But a speck of blood there on the uh, bridge of the nose of Nigel. So just under a minute ago then in this second session of a scheduled eight and Rafferty proving to be a bit stubborn at the moment nice little turn there by Oko and he was given a run around in fact by George Carmen and his last bout George was a substitute opponent a very late notice and Oko eventually got to him. Good right then from Oko. So two rounds then in favour of Chris Oko. There is Nigel Rafferty. Got a little nick there on the bridge of the nose. So a good right hand from Chris Oko. Coming up. Well, it was in fact a right uppercut. A little punch there that might have actually caused the damage on Rafferty's nose. Ten seconds. Second round three. <laughs> round three then of this cruiserweight contest. Chris Oko in the uh, yellow trunks. Has won the first two quite clearly. And Oko will want to get the job done here, I would have thought, in round three. Nice right hook then from Chris. And he's up the pace, visibly. Well, again, good work then from Oko. Brings a little wry smile to the uh, face of Nigel Rafferty. And Rafferty's lost two of his last eight, by the way, on cuts. So he'll want to avoid that tonight. And of course, Oko, a very sharp puncher. around by Oko, flailing back. And of course, Nigel Rafferty's taken part in so many roughhouse contests over the years. I remember him from years ago, of course. And that blood now starting to spill down his nose from the cut. Come on, Steve, stop on, 
boxing, our referee, our son, who has so inside the last 30 seconds then of this third round and once again it's been a good one for Chris Oko Rafferty has uh, been dogged in his resistance I think that's fair to say So, three out of three then for Chris Oko. And there's Nigel Rafferty getting that cut on the bridge of the nose treated. Bit of replay coming up here. Nigel Rafferty trying to mount something of a fight back, in fact. And Chris Oko ducking out of trouble. And I hate to admit this, but I'm not going to try and make anything up, of course, I'm not like that. But I know Rafferty's <laughs> trainer and manager so well, but just simply can't remember his name. It's been a few months, of Same course, since I've been involved with uh, pro boxing. And, uh, well, I shouldn't have had that last couple of fights, obviously. It's all over, I think. No, it's not. Just an extra bit of treatment there. And uh, Marcus Madonna wanting just a bit of grease taken off that cut. So, round four of this eight-round cruiserweight contest. And uh, Chris Oko has inflicted the damage, but uh, Rafferty is still very much there. And this could be a big year, I think, for Oko. Or the next year could be the time he makes his move. He will want to consolidate his position as a double champion first off and then of course add to his uh, tally and there may well be a world title fight in fact in the offing for him oh lovely punches <laughs> lovely shots there right up we got left hook from chris oko and rafferty went down very heavily and very quickly but it's as game as they come can oko finish him it's all over it's all over. Well, Rafferty, of course, always the first to complain. But a good fourth-round finish then for Chris Oko. Wonderful combination of punches to put Rafferty on the floor. Can't argue with that. And uh, maybe there would have been more on the way. So Marcus McDonald probably doing the right thing there. Here we are again. Watch this uh, flurry of punches from Oko that caused the knockdown. An uppercut left hook with the final two shots, if I remember rightly. There you are. Uppercut left hook. Wonderful combination. There's Dean Powell. And there is Nigel Rafferty. Cut on the bridge of the nose. Decked quite heavily, I thought. And uh, possibly more to come. Well, all mates afterwards. That's just the way it should be, of course. So 12 out of 12 then for Chris Oko. And Rafferty once again fulfills a pretty demanding obligation, I'd say. Here we go then for the MC, John McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, sports fans of 57 seconds of a round of four. With Rafferty in no condition to continue, your winner and star defeated, Chris Uko. <laughs> Yes, Nigel Rafferty was making things just a wee bit awkward for Chris Oko, but uh, finally succumbed to a right uppercut left hook combination that put him over. And uh, referee Marcus McDonald there obviously having the sight to realise that possibly it could have been just a bit rougher for Rafferty if that one had gone on. So, 
the champion leaves the ring. Of course, that was a non-title fight. Of course, our main event is still to come here from Windsor, and that will, of course, feature Joe Silavangi, the African based in France from Zaire, against the Nigerian, Peter Obo. And this, of course, could have been for the All-African title.